Hey there and welcome back. Today you and I are going to talk about 3D printed antiviral masks. As pretty much everyone is aware at this point, face masks have become critical in preventing the spread of coronavirus. 3D printing has become surprisingly helpful to the medical community. There are numerous instances of people who have printed masks and face shields for their local hospitals. And I believe a few printer factories have actually switched part of their production over to making masks and face shields. Now, for us, the single printer people and anyone who is not in a position to supply a hospital, we can still have some fun making our own protective gear for ourselves, our friends, and our family. Sewing a mask out of cloth is probably the easiest way to go for many people, but as is probably going to become clear, as videos go on, I don't usually take the path of least resistance. And I have a couple of 3D printed mask designs I found online, which we're gonna print out and find out which design works the best. doing that. We're gonna go through them one by one. They do require some assembly, and we're gonna see which one takes the longest, which one is the easiest, and which one has the best fit. Now, of course, they are gonna be a different fit for everyone. There are different sizes for quite a few of these, and if there aren't, it's very easy to resize inside of Cura or any other slicer. The question then comes, how many times do you have to print it before you get the right fit? In addition to the actual printed parts, I also have this, which is essentially insulation for your windows. It has an adhesive backing, which is actually really great because then you don't have to glue anything to your mask. You can just cut this and attach it and it will stay, hopefully. This is somehow slightly overwhelming. That one looks like the easiest, so why don't we start with that one? And it did come with a file for this TPU gasket which hopefully is gonna make this slightly more comfortable on your face and a better fit. Now, there's also a filter ring and a lock and you just have to sandwich your own filter of choice in between. I'm gonna see if I can install the gasket. I did originally actually print it in the wrong orientation, which was a bit of a mistake. Basically, I tried to, I don't know what I was thinking, quite honestly. Don't do that. Try to keep as much of it as close to the table as possible because it is TPU, it will flex. And if it flexes as you print, you will end up with this mess. Pop, pop, pop. Go with it, like a venom mask. I am venom. Getting back to the successful print, that actually looks quite good. I don't have any filters at the moment because I have too many masks for the filters. So I'm just gonna just attach everything as it is. So this little lock slides into place and then you can twist it and it locks in there like that. Well, now I can't get it out. As far as attaching this to your face, this one is probably gonna be the easiest. The hooks to hold the elastic are in fact hooks rather than holes. So you have a bit more versatility in putting the mask on and off. It is not something which you have to slip over your head or untie. All you have to do is just unhook. I don't have elastic, so in true 3D print fashion, I'm gonna actually just use a length of TPU that I cut. The hooks actually make this very convenient. Let's, let's see, how do I? Okay. And there we have it. So this is mask number one. I do think it's slightly, Oh, it's making me talk like Bane, that's for one. Who in Gotham, Batman is not the villain, I am the villain. And if you think you can stand against me and my mercenaries, then you are mistaken, Batman. Gotham is yours! None shall interfere, do as you please. Yeah, I think this is probably very effective. I feel like I'm already on a ventilator. Oh, do I have a line? I think I have a line from that. It does fit my face. 
If you have a smaller face, you will need to print this smaller. Our next mask is actually kind of similar in that it is a two part mask, one part PLA and one part TPU, which then glues together. This is a slightly larger TPU gasket. And I think that might help because the last one, even though it was TPU, it still felt like I have hard plastic on it. And I think I do have marks. As far as attaching it, you just need to press it in here. Come on, come on, come on. Keeps popping out when I push it in. Okay, so we are gonna have to glue this, which is probably not the healthiest thing to have to do to a mask, but once it's dry, it shouldn't be a problem, I think. Why is this so difficult? So we just squeeze that down together. Talking like I know what I'm doing, talking like I have a plan. If, argh, I did a terrible job of gluing this. That is embarrassing. If you're going to try, and we're good. Ah! This is too big. How is, how is this too big? This is like a small version. Okay, that is definitely my fault and not the design fault. Although I did print like the second smallest one, so these are very big. So this is not as engineered as the last one in terms of fitting in the cover, but it seems solid enough. Unlike the other one, this also does not have hooks. It only has holes for the elastic. So you do need to tie it or use something very flexible when you put it over your head and you will have to lift it up and lift it back down. The hooks are actually quite nice because it's so quick to put on and take off. I think my TPU is a bit short. Get in the hole. That is the best that I can get it on for right now. God, it looks like I'm talking to the Secret Service or something. Stop touching your ear. It is quite cool, but it does look a little bit like something out of Mad Max. It's not comfortable because it's the wrong size. So the right size would probably fix that. My bad. Moving on. Our next mask is very similar to the last one in terms of the general design. The only major difference is it does not have a TPU gasket. That's actually pretty interesting because with PLA, you can heat form it to your face. So you can probably get a better seal with this mask and just line it with our window foam. Something else to note about this mask is that it was by far the fastest to print. I think the whole thing, including the filter, took about two hours, whereas the one before this took about two hours for the mask part and four hours for the TPU because it's TPU, you have to print slowly. That is something that has to be said. If you just wanna make a mask as quickly as possible, this is probably a better bet than the others. As far as filters, you can use cotton pads or you can use the official filters for viral masks. The cap design is really quite cool because it uses these post and groove technique, very technical term I know, allowing you very simply to press the cap in and twist it and it locks in place. And then obviously to open it, you twist it the other way and it pops right out. Once again, this does not have hooks, it has holes. So when attaching this to your face, you do have to thread it through and have some kind of solution to attach it to your face, or you just have to untie it or pull it off your head every single time you use it. Oh, well, that actually works pretty well. Uh, I've made it a little bit, a little bit tight um, and it's uncomfortable because I didn't put in my window foam. This one I have a feeling is now a little bit small for my face, unlike the other one, which is the, you can see the size difference. This one is a little bit small. So you have to print this one maybe slightly larger for your face than you might think. But it actually is surprisingly comfortable even as the wrong size. My nose is hitting the filter though. Sure. We're gonna move on to our next mask. This mask is unique to the others in that part of the design requires you to form it to your face, so the seal is automatically very good. It also prints very quickly, one to two hours, depending on your settings, although it does require quite a bit of time in actually putting it together and fitting it to your face. The filter is a screw cap design, and you can use the cotton pad technique, or you can use any actual filters as well with this one. You drop in the filter cap, screw it down, and you're good to go. And you have a maraca. I'm gonna go find a hairdryer and then I will come back and I will do the best job that I can forming this hot plastic to my face without a mirror. This was a better idea in my head. I noticed that PLA responds very quickly to heat. 
The only problem is it does not stay flexible for long once it cools, so I had to keep the hair dryer on the plastic almost the entire time. This was not fun after a while. My fingers were beginning to get a little bit crispy, to say the least, and I did have to stop and take several breaks in which time it did cool down and I had to begin from the beginning again. So that's it, I actually found that fairly painless. One thing that I did notice is that there are tiny holes where the seams meet and obviously you don't want holes in your mask. So you will have to fill those with something, either a glue or some kind of putty or you can attach a cloth to the inside that will hide those and then essentially you're breathing through a cloth mask which slightly defeats the purpose. Once again as far as attaching this to your face there is only this hole which again means that you will have to fasten or tie your strap every single time you put the mask on. I'm gonna have to get a bit creative with this strap thingy here. Look at that. Oh look at the little pretzel. Nom, 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 nom. Ah, ah, there we go. This is actually quite comfortable. I do have to sort out the strap. The strap falls down a little bit too low. So you will have to actually spend quite a bit more time forming this to your face to get it to really sit properly. So I'm back. While I was heating it up, the place where you attach the filter cap started to come away from the mask body. Which kind of defeats the purpose of the filter cap. So. And so I made one which I think is slightly more my style. I think you're green! This one is actually quite cool. I have to be honest, in black and with this radioactive green, it makes it look seriously biohazard and like I could be working in some kind of military weapons center. That is a bit of a problem if you're going out on the street and you don't want to scare everybody and make it think it's a biohazard situation. But at the same time, why not? For the straps, I ended up using Velcro, which I cut into thin strips, one going up and one going down, and just fastened it with some paper clips. I actually went ahead and tried the window sealing foam to see if it would work, and I was actually pleasantly surprised because it sticks well and is surprisingly comfortable. In all, I'm actually the happiest with this mask. I think it might have a lot to do with the fact that I spent much more time fitting it to my face properly than anything else. Our final mask actually looks a little bit more like something Batman or Catwoman would wear. It's printed entirely in TPU, meaning it's flexible and will form to your face automatically, and has this interesting zipper-like technique of holding it together. This is the Valvi mask, and there is a tutorial on YouTube which I had to watch to try to figure out how to get this to zip up. Let's see if I can do it. Oh my god, this is a test in patience. I feel like I'm a monk. I need I need tweezers or I need something. I need some kind of tools. I have no tools! I have to say black on black is maybe not the best idea that I ever had for setting up a background for a video. Alright, so now that we got that, they say that you're supposed to put some tape over it and flip it out. I'm just gonna glue this along that seam. Next up, there were some strap designs that came with it. You have to take the arrows and put the arrows through the holes. This does seem like it would be a little bit difficult when you want to remove the mask. There is another version in the files that has hooks. My only concern was printing in TPU. I wasn't sure how well that would work out because my printer is not the best with TPU. So our mask is starting to dry. I did it again! Oh. I'm like a child playing with glue. Should not be allowed. Oh, I'm so concerned. I don't feel like that would hold. Yeah, it needed more time to dry. I might have rushed that slightly. Oops. I ended up scrapping this zipper idea. I didn't find that it worked very well. There's another version in the files that you can just sew, and I went with that. And here it is all sewn up. A friend of mine did this for me, so it is professionally done, as they say. There are some issues with it. Obviously on the inside there is a seam, which is probably not going to be very comfortable. So these arrows go in from the outside going in. Yeah, that's surprisingly a lot easier than I expected it to be. We got one more arrow. We're almost there. Ah, so that's, oh no, they're too small. What do I do now? Oh, that's so disappointing. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh god. Ah. Well, that's on and I'm never taking it off. I haven't even made my nose clip yet. Theoretically, you're supposed to sew this to your mask. 
So, yeah, I can't. I'm gonna say that this mask in theory is actually a very good idea. In practice, very difficult to get on, painful, and actually doesn't seal very well because I keep breathing and I'm blowing air in my nose, or in my eyes, from my nose. As a final closing test, I have one more mask, which I think might just be the winner. Yeah. Man, I need to brush my teeth. I hope that this video has brought you a little peace of mind and at least some insight into what you can and cannot expect when 3D printing your own masks at home. Consider subscribing to support the channel and make it possible to make better films and videos in the future. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.